At first glance, you might think this town is centuries old. But all of this is completely new. King Charles built this new and green town that took everyone by surprise, showing all the critics that he is more than just a royal title. The town of Poundbury is a reflection of his vision for Britain, sustainability, royalty, and beauty. But as we peel back the layers of this idyllic town, you'll learn why a lot of people didn't support Charles' vision for this town. It all started back in 1980 when King Charles wrote a book called A Vision of Britain. This book delves into the prince's views on architecture in the United Kingdom, emphasizing the need to preserve the unique character of towns and cities while advocating for a review of existing planning laws. It reflects his strong opinions against modernist architecture and his preference for traditional styles. When he wrote this popular book, critics said that such development concepts could not be practically implemented in today's society. The critics believed that the architectural style of this town was authoritarian and fantastical, something that was far from the practical reality. They advised the prince to focus on his charity polo matches rather than attempting to save the world of architecture. Because, well, this is what critics do. They challenge you and discourage you to do something. Charles could have listened to them. However, he decided to take on the challenge and prove them wrong by establishing Poundbury and other successful neighborhoods throughout the UK. King Charles III has always been interested in architecture. He comes from history, studied history, loves history, and has spent his entire life living in and with historic buildings. However, a lot of people showed resistance towards King Charles when he wanted to start the project of Poundbury. Hugh Aldersey Williams, a well-known British critic and reporter, publicly criticized the Poundbury project when it was still in its early stages. He believed that the town of Poundbury was an embarrassing anachronism in recent times. The town was even described as fake, heartless, authoritarian, and grimly cute by Andy Spain, an Arch Daily blogger. But that didn't stop Charles from pursuing his dreams. Charles explained that when he set out on this venture, he wanted to break the mold of conventional housing development in the United Kingdom and create an attractive place for people to live and work. He believed that many people were against building this town, yet he managed to succeed despite the hurdles along the way. Obviously, Charles could not do this alone. He needed the right kind of support, so he hired the architect Leon Crier. Leon was born in Luxembourg and was known for his love of new urbanism. If you remember, we have mentioned this name in a familiar sense before. He was also one of our protagonists in the story of Cayala, a city built in Guatemala. Leon Crier soon became Charles's right hand and the project's master architect for Poundbury a movement that opposed cities and towns being overcrowded with cars and automobiles. They were in favor of walkable towns and cities that integrate housing, business, retail, and green space. More than that, Charles's goal was to provide sustainable housing to the people of the city. Some residents opened up about the housing within Poundbury, like Blake Holt, who is the chair of the Poundbury Residents Association. He said that both he and his neighbors buy into the ethos of building differently. In a 2014 piece in the Architectural Review, Charles stated that his goal was to build resilient, sustainable, and human-scale urban environments that are land efficient. He planned to reduce carbon materials in the environment. He also expressed dissatisfaction with the way British cities have been broken down into zones with shopping and commercial places identical to the housing zones they serve. That's why Poundbury's architects went out of their way to avoid such repetition. The concept mixes and matches architectural designs as well as house colors and trims, which homeowners must maintain to retain the town's image. After a public consultation period, the local planning authorities accepted the concept and construction began five years later. But as successful and charming as this plan sounds, not everything that glitters is gold. It has been reported that this town doesn't offer much freedom to the people living in it. In one case, a woman couldn't paint her house the color she wanted until Charles approved of it. It's things like this that open Charles's vision up to criticism. Some people view Poundbury as an over-sanitized middle-class ghetto that fails to capture the essence of modern society. 
They say that this picturesque town's design, which is a mix of traditional styles, is attempting to recreate the past rather than addressing the needs of modern society. It's clear that whatever King Charles wants, he gets. Much like his wish for this town's architecture to be a mix of inexpensive houses along with properties, with 35% of the homes being created as affordable rental apartments, shared ownership, or discounted sales. Charles also operates a discount to open market plan in Poundbury, which allows new customers to acquire properties at a 25 to 30% discount, which is subsequently passed on to the next owner. As you can see, the housing styles available are very diverse. Take a tour around Poundbury and you'll see King Charles's cherished classical architectural style within country cottages built to reflect the local surroundings, as well as Italian villa-inspired residences. The mix attracts a diverse population of people. One of the secrets to Poundbury's success is being able to innovate. However, you might be shocked to find out that this town has been under construction for more than 20 years and is yet to be finished. The town is expected to be completed around 2025. Nevertheless, Poundbury is a truly unique place. Hundreds of tiny businesses can be found throughout the area, including bike shops, bridal gown seamstresses, clinics, beauty salons, cafes, and a funeral home. Even though the development of traditional building methods appears to date back centuries, these builders aren't as meticulous as their ancestors. For example, some of what looks to be external metal is just really painted fiberglass. Ben Pentreath, one of the major architects, told The Guardian in 2016 that they were trying to build a convincing fake. Still, Poundbury has created a genuine community, which was one of Charles's goals. He has claimed that car-oriented, Primarily practical design spaces promote social isolation. Two community gardens provide public spaces for people. The town square, Queen Mother Square, named after who other than Charles's grandmother, organizes a food and arts festival in August. To critics, this green city is a prince's personal pet project, an anti-modernist statement that is too expensive to solve a pressing housing crisis. But Poundbury is mostly about architecture and preserving the essence of traditional buildings. Despite the criticism, Poundbury has been a great success, creating over 2,300 jobs and contributing 330 million pounds to the local economy. The architecture is different from typical towns. The small lanes here are curvy, reminiscent of a medieval village, with several courtyards, alleyways, and dead ends. There are no stop signs or traffic lights. To avoid uniformity, the town is a deliberate mashup of architectural styles, all referencing the past. Greek revival shapes, Roman arcades, and palladium decoration. Replacement Georgian manors sit beside recreated country cottages and replica industrial age warehouses and are now filled with low-rise luxury flats and a nursing facility. Poundbury appears to be worn and mossy, as does much of England. However, the oldest buildings were only constructed in 1994. Critics describe Charles's Poundbury as a regressive force, a dilettante opposed to progress, a control freak, and a little England traditionalist who reveres tradition since, well, tradition is what keeps a king alive in the 21st century. But King Charles believes the public, not royals, should benefit from wind farm revenues. This town emphasizes that Charles is dedicated to his vision. He visits Poundbury several times a year. Most long-term residents have met him several times. As the prince, he seemed to enjoy walking around with a low-key entourage and discussing drainage issues, parking problems, and resale values. Residents get the feeling that he actually cares about them since he goes there often to keep a check on things. A town built as Prince Charles's experiment in architecture was bound to have some faults in it, but he tried to make this town the embodiment of ambitions he had for the rest of his country. Poundbury may not be perfect, but this town sure knows how to capture the attention of people. So what do you think? Did King Charles do a good job in creating Poundbury? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up before you leave.